Yes. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this three days boot camp where you learn six strategies for 10x growth. And the six strategies are divided between six consultants who are uh, named in their own industry, in their own fraternity. Today, uh, on the first day, it is me, Nimish Desai, and Azhar Ali. I'll be taking seven to eight on five costly mistakes that hamper your business productivity and profit. And uh, next would be Azhar. Hi, Azhar. Hi, hello everyone. Hope you all are as excited as we are. <laughs> okay, so let's dive in. And I've told everyone, I'm sure everybody has pen and paper with you. Otherwise, I'll give you two minutes. Please bring pen and paper very quickly because we are going to be doing a lot of exercise which will help you grow better, understand things better. If you will not write down, if you will not work with me, the whole purpose of doing this uh, boot camp would be lost. So please have pen and paper. I'm giving you two minutes. Quickly go and fetch the pen and paper. So what we are going to do in the first session is understand five costly mistakes that hamper your productivity and profits. You must become productive and not busy. And there's a very fine line uh, to understand between being productive and being busy. And that is what we will understand today. So everybody with pen and paper ready? Now I'm going to ask you to do one small exercise. This is the exercise that you have to do. Okay, why do you want to increase your productivity? And what are your current challenges? Please write down three reasons why you want to increase your productivity and three current challenges that you're facing. You've got about a minute left still. Azhar, please admit people. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you are done, please put it in the chat box. Done. Uh, can you please repeat the question once again? It's there on the uh, slide. Can you see the question on the slide? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. So what do you want? Why do you want to increase your productivity? And what are your current challenges? This will help us uh, understand because when you'll have this three questions and three challenges in front of you, while I'll go through the whole presentation, you'll be able to relate to them better. And then you'll understand why certain things are done in a certain manner. All right. So what do we normally say? I mean, I want everybody to put it in the chat box. What do they understand by productivity? What do you mean by productivity? Please type it in the chat box. What do you understand by productivity? If we'll have a lot of interaction, then we'll have a lot of fun going through this one hour. Otherwise, it will be like, you know, one way logo. Correct. More time, results. What else? Doing more in lesser time. Brilliant, Vinod. So I'll make you uh, tell you what I understand by productivity. Productivity is very simple. Output divided by input. Everybody agrees with me, correct? Now what is output? The amount produced by a person or a machine or a business or an industry. And what is input? What is put into a process or a system or a business? That is input and that is what normally people say this is the productivity now if you take an example and if you say okay, productivity is what as a lot of people say getting the results you want with less time and effort that is what Tony Robbins always says this is what it is about and we'll look at 
a uh, lot of people say productivity i want to tell you one important factor today all right and now this factor is very critical i don't think a lot of people talk about this factor but this is the factor which matters and let me explain you why and it is called productivity factor say in a company produces 15 crore worth of output monthly all right and the monthly value of all the input that is labor material other cost still 11 crores 50 lakh so what that entails to it entails to a productivity factor of 1.3 now this is the factor that you have to look at always because this will give you a true picture as to whether your or your employees or your product or service increase of productivity has happened or no i'll give you one more example on this to make you understand even better say for example your company started producing 20 crores worth of output monthly you say wow from 15 crores i have gone to 20 crores my business has improved but has the productivity and profit margins improved say if your monthly value of all inputs has also increased proportionately to 15 crores 38 lakhs so what is your factor the factor is still 1.3 so your production has improved your productivity has not improved so this 1.3 you need to really take care of if you can increase 1.3 to 1.4 1.5 1.6 4 5 anything that is where the productivity factor comes into the picture this is the figure that you should always look at and compare it month on month quarter on quarter year on year dear friends let me introduce you myself to you i am nimish desai business efficiency consultant and i am amazon best seller author of the book called the power of being organized i have more than 32 years experience in real estate industry at precision strategies which is my company we have trained more than 10000 people across 12 nations and we mentor and coach entrepreneurs to enable them to have an all round 360 degree growth in their personal and professional life we have more than 9 associates from different fields like law diet hr company secretary to help us and help our clients do their day to day business so that the responsibility lies with just one that is pricing and strategies you don't need to run and all everyone wasting your time with others we take care totally with you now i'm going to tell you about the secret of personal productivity can anybody put in chat box again what is the secret of personal productivity can anyone in the chat box we need to have a chat box buzzing right throughout to have a real fun in this game best use of time nikhil is saying i'm saying the secret of personal productivity is tea now i'm not talking about the tea chai whatever we have in the morning and in the evening it is t e a t and now what does this t stands for it simply stands for time energy and attention now if you can maintain and effectively manage this three things very very confidently your productivity shoots up this are the three things and i am sure everybody here will agree you need to manage time you need to manage your energy and you need to manage your focus if you can manage all three your productivity just skyrocket and it is not uh, you know something secret formula or a patented formula that you need to learn you just need to be confident that yes i can manage and we are here today to help you understand how you can do all this now you know sometimes what happens uh, when we are really down and out and probably a lot of you most of us have worked today the whole day so we may be a little down on energy so what helps us at such times a nice coat a nice song which peps up which boost our energy so what we are going to do is before we actually dive into those strategies let's look at some of the inspirations and we can hold thought on that and let's see if this rings any bells to you the first quote he is one of my favorite uh, 
crime writer Franz Kafka, he says, your mind is for having ideas and not holding them. Lot of us have lot of ideas right throughout our life. But if you don't take action on those thoughts, you're not going to grow. So this itself is a big one that you get ideas, but don't hold them in your head. Take action on them because that is where the production happens. That is where the productivity comes. The next is nothing is less productive than to make more efficient what should not be done at all. We are going to be discussing in detail about this. But this is so true. Unless you don't decide what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. There are chances that at times, things which are not important to you, you'll be spending so much time on them that what things that you really need to look at, you forget to focus on them. And that is where your productivity hampers. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. Again, in this session, we are going to talk on this. And Sifan Kohi, I'm sure most of us know, he's a brilliant guy. The world knows him. And finally, stressing output is the key to improving the productivity. While looking into increasing activity can result in just the opposite. Now, this is a very brilliant one. If we want to go from A to B, and if you can go directly from A to B, why do you need B and C in between? Lot of us in the name of systems and processes put in so many processes in between and our government is uh, known for it. Ye table say ye table, ye table say ye table, ye table say ye table, the file keeps rolling around, correct? So don't increase number of activities. Stress, focus, on how much output you can get out with the less amount of activities. <clears throat> and the final one, the simple act of paying positive attention to people has a great deal to do with productivity. Now, dear friends, though we have machines, we have computers, we have laptops, we have everything, but we still need people to work on it. And if we don't show empathy towards the employees that are working with us, if we don't care for them, do you think they will care for us or our company? Yes, you are paying them, but they are working for you. That's done with. But if you show a lot of positive attention towards them, when you give them feedback, rather than shouting at them, initially try sitting with them and pointing out nicely where they've gone wrong. Believe me, they'll improve immensely. So pay a lot of positive attention to the people who are working with you. Just don't pay a lot of attention and empathy and understanding with your customers or clients. Pay it to your employees also and they will skyrocket your business. Believe me, customers and clients don't. It's your employees, it's your workers who take business to your next level. Because if they will produce business, uh, the product and services of a finest quality you will have customers and clients. But if your employees will not function to their optimum, your service and product is going to suffer. Customers and clients will vanish. It's your employees. Pay a lot of positive attention to them and you'll have a great, great business with you. Now, a lot of trainers and uh, webinars, they tell you that we will give you bonus strategies at the end or when you sign up and all those. I don't believe in that. I'm giving you two bonus strategies right up front. The first is trainings and second is morning huddle. Now what's training? A lot of us, again, in India, especially, uh, we have a prevalent thought process that I have paid employees so they are supposed to work for me. Yes, agreed. But those employees, if you invest in improving their skills, improving their communication skills, improving their working skills, improving their technology skills, will it not help your company? A lot of people look at this training as a cost. I'm saying training is an investment for your own company. The way you change your laptop every two, three years because the laptops have changed the way you change your mobile 
no need to change your employees, but you can definitely upgrade their skills, upgrade their knowledge. And if your employees will know that my employer is interested in my growth also, they will all stay with you for a longer period of time because it's give and take. You can see here a lot of trainings we do where the here we are putting what we are doing is this is an iron rod that people are bending by putting at their neck. This is what we are going to be doing in our three day uh, boot camp uh, retreat that we are going to do. This improves the trust level between employees because both have to start at the same time. Otherwise, the rod may go through the other guy's neck. That improves. So a lot of trainings are required for them. And this one is my favorite. This one, we do it regularly, virtually every day. What we do, we go to our office, we go to our table, we go to our cabin and we start working. Now, if you have a team under you, and if you're going to have just 10 minute morning huddle, standing, get them around and just have a chit chat and ask them what is there for today. Explain them what you explain, what you want from them today. What are your expectations for today's work? So what happens is everybody is going in the same line. It should no happen that your one of the employees has thought for me, this is important. So I'll do this today, Ajit. But for you, it could have been something else. So morning, just 10 minute huddle with your staff who's working under you. Just give them a normal chat, a standing meeting so that it does not prolong for a longer period of time. And everybody for a whole day are focused in the same direction for the work. Now that brings me to five costly mistakes that we are going to do, but this also means that it's a poll time. So we are going to have a poll. Please answer to this poll. You people can see the poll, please. Yes, sir. Yep. So please take the poll. Come on, guys. I need a lot of interactions here. Because unless you will not answer them, you will not know. I will also not know what to talk, how much to talk, when to talk, or what to talk. So let's get on to this. Last 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, done. So, do you plan your day every day? Yes, 64%. When do you plan your day? Before leaving home, 18%. After reaching office, 27%. After seeing what file on the table is 14%. One day before is 36%. And never done it is 5%. And what do you think you must plan for your day? Sometimes, never, always. Okay. So, our first cost a mistake that a lot of people make is planning your day and how you plan your day. This is a very, very critical activity because this will decide how your day is going to go. So what you should do. But before I go there, I want to tell you one small story about Ivy League. Now there's a brilliant and very successful conglomerate in USA. The owner was Charles Schwab. They were the top steel producing company in USA in 1918, 1-8. And he was very energetic. He wanted his team to always improve, always perform better. And he wanted his team's productivity to increase. 
So he approached Ivy Lee and he told him, what can you do for my employees? And what will be your fees? So believe me, guys, not only in India, even in USA in those days, they were saying, Kitna hai, like Maruti ka ad, what will be your price? So Shrav asked him, what, what fees are you going to charge me? So Ivy Lee said, give me three months with your uh, employees. Let me work with them. If my systems work, then you pay me whatever you feel is the worth of what I've worked with them. He worked with them for three months and for sure, I will use method work. Can anybody put in the chat box what fees on his own Charles Schwab would have paid I will use? Can we have some participation, some numbers, $1,000, $2,000? What would it have been in 1918? $25,000, Nikhil Bhai. Anyone else? 10% of the revenue, okay. Who else? $10,000 is Munish. And Nikhil Bhai has attended my uh, workshop before, so very smartly he put it up there, $25,000. Right, it is $25,000. Now, if you correlate that $25,000 in 1918 to today, it works out to about 4 crores in rupees. And I'm here to share that four crore worth formula, the secret, the method of Ivy League, absolutely free with you guys. So are you guys all ready with your paper and pen? It's a very simple five-step formula. If you can attend this, you will be able to do it brilliantly. Now, what does Ivy League say? At the end of each workday, Write down the six most important things you need to accomplish tomorrow. No more, no less. So you are supposed to plan one day before in the evening before you close your office. Reason being, okay, when you sit down to plan and while you're planning, even if you take more time, it's okay because your office is actually over. But if you go in the day, when your day is going to start, then you are always in a rush. There are always certain deadlines that you have to meet. So you may plan all wrong. So it is better you plan one day in advance. He's talking of six most in 1918. We could have four, five, eight, depending on what post we hold and what kind of work we have. But just hold it there. We are going to marry this with another method later on. Take a few minutes to prioritize those six items in order of their importance. And this is what I want you to hold. Do not prioritize immediately. I'm going to give you another brilliant formula, a method, which married with Ivy Lee is going to give you a superlative results. But you have to prioritize them. Then you write, when you arrive next day, concentrate only on the first one he's saying, not the most important. Please mark that. Concentrate only on the first item until the first task is finished before moving to the next one. Work through the rest of your list in the same fashion. At the end of the day, any unfinished item, move to the following day. And repeat. And do you all believe this is very simple if you can really do it in your lifestyle? If you can ingrain this that I want to plan one day before, we can do this and this can really help us plan better. Let her have the Please, please, please do not uh, hesitate to put your thoughts in chat box because that's the feedback that I'm looking at and what all I should be stressing on, what all I should be brushing apart and go ahead because I don't want to repeat something that you already know. I would rather share something which you've not known before. So is this an easy one to attend to? Edwin, we'll have a discussion session and that you, you can hold your questions for then, Edwin. Okay, now I want that pen and paper to be taken up again. Please write down what are the activities to be executed tomorrow by you. I'm giving you a minute to do this. Please write down one, two, three, four, five, as many activities that you plan to work on tomorrow.
this will really help us because when I'm going to talk about the other strategies later on, which are going to be married with this one, you will then realize how beautifully you can really, really maximize your day optimally, work for less number of hours, but have a maximum output. And that can happen only if you're going to write down just now, that will give you an understanding as to what you're going to do with those strategies also. Let's move ahead. Now I'm giving you 30 seconds. This is the first strategy that we discussed. Think what does this mean to you, which is a trigger point in your mind? And in what particular situation can you put this in action, which is the action plan? What does this mean to you? And in what particular situation can you put this in action? Now, we come to the second costly mistake that you're going to make. But for that, again, I'm going to have poll. And here comes the poll. Please participate in this poll. Come on, friends. I need a lot of participation here on the poll. <coughs> come on, come on, come on. Very quickly, very quickly. We have two sessions today. We have to cover a lot of work. We need a very active and prompt response from you people. That's what the productivity is. Do it quickly efficiently smartly so let's have a lot of results here let's have a lot of lot of you've got last 10 seconds now 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 one, gone. Now, these are the results. Do you make to-do list? Brilliant. Have you heard of not to-do list? Yes, 46% people have heard of it. Do you make not to-do list regularly? Brilliant. To-do list is like files and papers lying on your work table. Is this statement false or true? True, a lot of people, wow. And to-do list has tendency to swell with more items getting included in it. 67% people agree to this. Now, what does that mean? That to-do list is dangerous to me. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna out of the five, we did one, here we're gonna do two together. That is NTDL and say no. All right, so what? does this mean now before i go there i want to ask you one more question and i need answers in the chat box for this what makes you more rich spending the money or saving or investing your money can we have answers in the chat box please what makes you more rich spending the money or saving or investing the money second one in those saying investing saving investing all right, brilliant, 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 brilliant. So my question to you all is, when it comes to money, everybody agrees that saving and investing money is what makes you rich. I'm saying, why shouldn't that, the same principle be applied to the time? You know, money, if you lose, say share market has crashed today by 10,000 points. Your investment was one crore, it has come down to 20 lakhs. If you sit patiently on it or work on it, you probably may go to one crore again. Correct? If you are not healthy, if you've fallen sick, 
and you are not able to work, you will probably become healthy again. Time is one commodity which one lost. Nothing in this world can get it back for you. So in fact, more than money, more than your health, believe me, time is the most precious commodity that we are working and changing with. And this is one commodity, unfortunately, a lot of us misuse and do not give importance. Why? Because there is no tangential gains attached with it. You are not gaining any money. If I say one hour today, I'm going to get one lakh rupee. If you're going to give that somebody, you'll probably save it. Please, please work on your time brilliantly. You'll have so much time on your hand. And the people who keep saying that I don't have time will stop saying that. Now look at what Warren Buffett has to say. Don't say what is left after spending, but spend what is left after savings. Now this holds good for money and time both. And these are all people who have a lot of wisdom here. So what we'll do here, now I'm giving you two scenarios, okay? Scenario one, when you go to the office, would you like to see this scenario or would you like to see this scenario? Let's have it in the chat box. Which scenario would you like to see when you reach your office? Nikhil is saying one, Hindu is saying two. So a lot of people are saying one, two, one, two mix. I'm saying, do you want to see the scenario two where your table is all cluttered with lots of files and other things? Nobody wants to, correct? Now I'm getting a lot of ones here. So you want to see scenario one. Now, supposing when you reach office and you are in scenario two, what would you do? You normally clear your table, put everything aside, and then you'll pick up things from that that you require just now to work on. Correct? If I'm saying what I'm saying is making sense to you, please type in the chat box, agree, 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 agree. I know I'm Hindu, that's my favorite also, the plants. Yep, agree. So you need to, you need to clear out your table, then pick up what things you want and then work on it. The same thing applies here, not to-do list. Before you make your to-do list, you make your not to-do list. If you make your not to-do list first, believe me, your to-do list will not swell. Otherwise, your to-do list is an endless list. It, everything is to do, to do, to do, to do. But if you will not decide what you are not going to do, it's going to hamper a lot for the simple reason that what you don't do determines what you can do so decide all those mundane works if you are at an entrepreneur or if you are at a very high post decide that all those mundane works if you're an for example an entrepreneur or a solopreneur don't do accounts by yourself don't do hr work by yourself delegate it outsource it because the amount of time that you're spending in those mundane work is not taking your company anywhere. You need to be having free time on your hand to have bigger visions for your company. Think about how your company is going to grow. You are not there to do one plus one is equal to two or kitna kharcha hua or kitna nahi hua. Please outsource those works or delegate it to somebody else. Only do the works that will move your company forward. This is one secret formula that I'm giving you. As an entrepreneur, as a CEO, as a senior guy, you will only do those works which is going to move your company forward. The works that are not going to move your company forward but are required to be done, please delegate or outsource those works. The only way for a super productive person to continue to grow professionally without going crazy is to periodically decide what you are not going to do. Now, he is another brilliant consultant in the world over. Please Google his name and you'll realize what he says. So what we come to? The things that we are not going to do, things which are going to say no to. 
no smartphone 24 7. In fact, when we are going to have retreat in Goa now, we are going to give each participant a pouch for their mobile. We are going to ask them to put their mobiles in that and put it aside so that you don't get disturbed. There is nothing in this world that cannot wait for one hour. I would request again just now also, that's what was written on our front screen. Please mute your phone or put it away. You don't need, this is one of the biggest productivity buster and disruptor in the world today. It is a boon to have a smartphone, but if you don't use it smartly, it's going to kill your day. It's going to kill your productivity. Decide when you're really working onto something, put your phone on mute, not on vibrate, because vibrate will still draw your attention. Put it on a mute, put it upside down and keep it aside. Do that work, important work that you have to finish and then look at the phone. That one hour phone, people, others can always wait. But the difference that you'll find if you'll do that without getting distracted, it's going to be an amazing result. Second is no emails first thing in the morning or rather last thing in the night for the simple reason that when you start in the morning and if you find a very disturbing email, your day is lost because you are then only thinking about that email. You may be feeling angry about it or anxious about it or very scared about it. So you are not going to focus on your work. Please, there's a different uh, subject we take up, which again, we are going to take it up in Goa. When to do your mundane works like this, if at all you want to do like emails and other things, there's a certain time period that you need to fix. For example, if I have to tell you today, please do it after lunch. Because once you've had lunch, you normally feel little you know, lazy. So that half an hour, you can do all those mundane work which don't require a lot of attention, which don't require a lot of energy. Do your emails, do your marketing, look at WhatsApp, do it after lunch. That would work better. No meetings or calls without agenda. Lot of time people call us. My first question and Nikhil Bhai will agree here. What is the meeting? What is the agenda? And how long will it be? If you do not get the agenda, if you do not get the time as to how long the meeting is going to last, do not attend. Tell them I need it because I need to plan my day accordingly. You can't tell me half an hour meeting or 45 minutes meeting and it cannot stretch for two hours. How many of you have experienced that? Please type in the chat box that your meetings have kept going on and on and on. Let's see if anybody has or everybody here is super efficient. Let's have it in the chat box. Happens, Indo is saying. So you people, so don't agree to it. Tell them, send me an agenda, send me a time limit as to for, from what time to what time the meeting. People will then respect your time, will respect you, that he is not going to come for the meetings without if you don't give them agenda. Do not overanalyze. And this always when I talk about reminds me of Amitabh Bachchan ka dialogue in Kudagawa. That so jab gehri ho jati hai, to irade kamzor ho jate hai, kudabach. Don't overanalyze. We get into so much analyzing, analyzing, analyzing. Don't. You know what happens when you do overanalyze? You're not working on that service or the product that you're thinking about. Even if it's a half-baked thing, please put it across. You will learn from the mistakes, from the feedbacks that will, you will get from that rather than you doing over-analyzing, worrying about things that may not happen. Because by doing over-analyzing, you are actually not going forward. Going forward is making the product. If you feel that this is, say, 90% right, put it out in the market. You'll get the feedback. You can always improve. But if you will try to always make it 100%, that product will never come out in the market. And by the time you may put, somebody else must have come out with a similar product. So do not overanalyze. As I told before, delegate and outsource the works that are not going to take your or your company forward. If you're working somewhere as an employee, if that thing is not taking you forward, 
please try and delegate it to somebody who's there under you. That does not mean you delegate everything because you'll have to do something. But work on the cases which are more important, which really require your time and attention. Do not try to be perfect. As I said, while I was discussing over analyzing, imperfect step forward is a good step forward. Now, I'll take you all back to the childhood and this just came to me today. I've never spoken like this before. In none of them. You know, probably Nikhil Bhai must have never heard. Imagine when we were born and when we took our first step. Did we start walking straight away? Or we fell a lot of time. We fell a lot of time. When we tried to learn cycling, did we learn from the first time we sat on the cycle? Or we fell down from the cycle also a lot of times. So had you waited to be able to perfectly walk or perfectly do the cycling only than you'll do, would you be walking today? Or would you have done cycling? Do not try to be perfect. Whatever you have with you, if you feel that product or service is good enough, please go forward that you will get chance to improve upon, improvise upon, make it better. Do not. Do not try to be perfect. Nobody even, I mean, I'm a Hindu, so I can say in our scripture it is said, even Rama was not perfect. So if Lord was not perfect, why are we trying to be? That's my theory of looking at it. And last, do not bring gadgets to bedroom. Bedroom is for recreation, for sleeping, and for resting. A lot of us, till the last moment we want to close our eyes, we are still on WhatsApp or on Google or now the latest friend, Clubhouse. Do not get gadgets in the bedroom. Dim your lights. You will get nice sleep. Your body needs rest. Your brain needs rest. All those gadgets are killing us. Why are we less healthy than our parents or grandparents? Simple reason. They had specific times for specific works. Beyond that, nothing. Do not get gadgets to the bedroom. Now I want you to write down five not to do list. I've got 30 seconds for you. Note down today after hearing to all this, which five things you are going to decide not to do from tomorrow. <coughs> and while you're writing that, we are going to have 30 seconds for you again to decide what does this mean to you and in what particular situation can you put this in action. And I need some reactions here from you people to let me know how are you enjoying this session. Is it going good or are you feeling bored? Or you need a break or what it is can somebody write in the chat box thank you thank you mama thank you uh, mother this encourages me to deliver even better and i would appreciate few more honest opinions in this thank you nikhil bhai thank you azar thank you hindu thank you all this is really really uh humbles me that I'm delivering some value to you today for what you've come. Now, next one. And as we did for the first two, we are going to have poll before we go to the strategy. Here's the poll. Please, please participate quickly so that we can move forward quickly. We have a lot to cover still.
last 10 seconds 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 gone you know about income tax audit have you heard about time audit brilliant do you regularly do time audit 25 percent brilliant how often do you do time audit daily wow 13 percent doing it super weekly four percent fortnightly four percent never 50 percent and monthly 29 percent brilliant people are doing time audit but more than 50 percent now almost 50 percent people are not doing time audit do you have a specific time audit system 13 percent are saying yes wow and 88 percent are saying no so let's understand and i'll tell you what kind of a time audit systems can you have all right now as i told you before lot of us lot of us say okay sir time nahi hai. 24 hours is less for me okay uh, let me ask you how many of you feel that 24 hours is less for you and you need more number of hours how many of you need more than 24 hours let's let's have it in the chat box let let the chat box buzz friends Hindu is saying enough time mind blowing superb harish wants more time brilliant who else wants more time more than 24 hours no mama doesn't want mama this is enough sufficient yes brilliant so i will not say enough time wow so should i do time audit or i should not do time audit okay i'll what i'll do is i'll explain you where you can have at least four hours extra for you to do what you really want to do in life all right now let's look at the numbers the total number of hours in one week is 24 into 7 168 correct simple now what we do we say ke eight hours we are spending for work so 48 hours are gone in the work hours travel hours i'm saying ke you on an average travel two hours a day to and fro from the work so two hours a day 12 hours are gone there look at the number which is remaining balance down below the number of sleep hours, I'm saying eight hours of sleep, people like me require about five, six hours, I'm good enough. But I'm on a calculation, I'm saying six, eight hours a day, you want to sleep. So 48. And I'm saying another two hours of miscellaneous works, travel or anything per day. You still have balanced number of hours per week, 48. Now, there are a lot of smart people here, I know. And they must be very quietly thinking that Nimish Bhai calculated on 24 7, 168. So the loss is on six days. That is eight into six, two into six, one full day. I'm saying your Sunday, 24 hours. Let's discount that. So 24 hours are gone. You still have four hours per day. I'm putting the whole Sunday out now. All right. So once I've put whole Sunday out, now I'm dividing 24 hours by six days. You still have four hours. Now there are a lot of women entrepreneurs here. They'll say, okay, what males think about? We have to cook. We have to do this. We have to do that. Agreed, madam. You have another two hours for that. You still have two hours per day to do what you want to do, what you love to do the most, subject to you doing the time audit, you managing your time well. That's the productive. And imagine if you can do for two hours your favorite hobby or something that you always wanted to do. Like I watch two hours every day OTT, come what may, either Netflix or Amazon or whatever it is. And I need one hour of reading time before I go to sleep. Otherwise, I don't get sleep. And believe me, Nikhil Bhai and a lot of other people know, for last 10 years, I've been only working five hours a day. In fact, I'm writing a book, which is the next book that I'm coming up with is five hour work day. A lot of us entrepreneurs can manage within five hours a day. If you delegate work, if you outsource work smartly, and when you delegate and outsource, I'm not saying do not have a control on that, but don't do it. 
delegate it, outsource it, and you do a lot of other work that you are supposed to do. And I have been doing brilliantly well with five hour work day. Laura Van der Kamp is one of the biggest time management gurus in the world today. Please look her up and you'll find. And what she has to say, we don't need that much time to do amazing things. Small moments can have a great power. Don't you all believe even those 10 minutes of intimate time with our kids, those 20 minutes of listening to Mama Rafi, because I'm a fan of Mama Rafi, nice songs of Mama Rafi would really cheer us up, would really bump our energies again. You don't need great hours. You need small, small times. But if you can find those times while managing your time management properly, you'll have a great life tomorrow in your future. And you know, the flip side of this, if you do not manage time, Parkinson said that your work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. And believe me, most of us have experienced this, that if we are supposed to give something in the next week, we will start working two or three days before. And if for some reason, if that is postponed by another week, it's not that we'll finish and we'll go to something else. We'll put it aside and we'll do something else and we'll start again after that. At least when I was doing engineering from Tumkur, as I discussed before Bangalore, if our exams got postponed, we used to put our books, start playing cricket. I'm a great uh, fan of cricket. I played cricket up to district level. Go out, start playing cricket. Start sitting for exams only one week before. That's this principle. Work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. Please, please take care of the time. In those young days, I did not, so I could not. But now I do. This is the sheet that I'm sharing with you. Now, this sheet, I started, uh, devised it in 1993 when I was working for Hiranandani Construction. And a lot of my engineers, my supervisors used to say, Sir, upar ja ke slap check karna padta hai. we have to do this, we have to make this record, we don't get time to do. I said, okay, fine. Have a notebook of 100 pages with you. On every day, on a half hourly basis, write down what you're doing. Now, if you will see here, it's a half hour. This is my timeline. You can take yours. Mark it into important, unimportant, and waste. And put a remark here. Do this for a week at least. Actually try and fill in, you realize how much time are we wasting every day in the name of being productive or in the name of being busy. If you really put your paper down and you can take a screenshot if you want how to do it. What you have below is an Excel, which is the formula that has been put. You will realize how much time you're actually wasting. And if you'll see the time utilized to do unimportant work, you can actually outsource or delegate. Same for the time wasted in non-productive. So this is almost 54% of the time that my staff was wasting in the works that they were not supposed to do. So if you're working 10 hours and if it means 54% of time, that means for more than five hours, you're doing works which you could have either delegated or outsourced. Does that make sense? I'll give you another sheet. This is daily sheet if you don't like that. Put a start time, stop time, which activity do you are doing and the reason for the activity and give the importance. Now, anything that you do, if you're eating, you're eating because you're feeling hungry. If you're talking on the phone because you feel like talking or somebody's call, there is always a reason for any activity. So put an activity that you're doing for that time frame, give it a reason and give it an importance. And when you evaluate it at the end of the day, you yourself will find out how many activities could you have avoided on weekly basis. Then based on those important things that you mark, put the activities and put time spent. And then again, you'll realize how much time you can actually save by doing this. I'll give you 30 seconds here to think about this again. That what does this mean to you? And in what particular situation can you put this in action? 
this is a very very powerful tool if you religiously will use it and honestly if you'll put it down because it is you only who's seeing those times it is for your improvement if you use this tool you will save lot many hours now this brings us to one first testimonial that i'm going to share with you are the lot of previous participants who shared good evening nimesh bhai this is neeraj washi from nivale a travel company based out of mumbai focused on 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 specialized uh, segments of travel so as a travel company there is always a you know a thing where we need to do a parallel processing and uh, get a lot of things thrown at on, on our head and do it so i was wondering whether that was the right thing to do and whether whether i was planning my day properly and uh, the two time management webinars we had offered a great insight into the overall structure of how i should approach my day and how we how i should plan my time and it was fantastic fantastic and definitely uh, inspirational in terms of how i look at things going forward so thank you very much nimesh bhai and i look forward to uh, being part of such uh, webinars in, in future thank you okay now we have discussion time here so i'm stopping that all the people who had questions please put on your videos on so i can see your beautiful handsome smart faces let's come with the questions edwin i think had question he had raised hand before anyone having any questions here you can share your questions then we can go forward for everyone it was crystal clear or everybody just doesn't want to talk about it i'm getting a little confused here clear thank you let's get to that now okay please give me a minute and a half to tell you about what we do at prescient strategist this is what we do at prescient strategist okay we come to the final one which is body and energy cycle now this is the one which i want you to marry with ivy lee method what's body energy i'm saying on one side is proficiency on the other side is passion we'll run through this very quickly because i think i'm going to overshoot there are four zones because depending on proficiency and passion if you have a low passion low proficiency that zone is called a disconnection zone and what i'm talking about just now is a body energy cycle every one of us has our own body energy cycle somebody feels very energetic in the morning some people feel very energetic in the afternoon people like me i am a night owl 
I do most of my creative work from 10.30 in the night to 1.30 in the morning. That's my body energy cycle. That's where I feel more creative. So you need to understand your body cycle as to when are you feeling really energetic, when you feel sluggish, when you feel down and out. And those are the four zones that we are discussing here. When you require high proficiency and low passion, that is called disinterest zone. When there's a high passion and, uh, and low proficiency, it is called escape zone. And when you have high passion and equally high proficiency, that's flow zone. Now, what all can come in this zones according to your body energy cycle? In this connection zone, you can say, as I told you before, emails, calls, daily reports, because they do not require very high proficiency. They do not require very high passion. So do all your works in this time zone. Your disinterest zone, you can do marketing, staff calling and all those things because it requires high proficiency, but it does not require a lot of passion. For escape zone is the hobbies, music, reading, PPTs, if you love to make PPTs and all. Because this is where you really escape from the real world, real work. And flow zone is one which is the most optimum. Big rocks, strategies and creative work. So when you plan your Ivy League, six most important things. At the same time, if you take into consideration your body energy cycle, your most important activity could come in the afternoon. Now, I understand sometimes you may be have running the time constant and you may have to do it in the morning. That's okay. That's what you call exception to the rule. But as a rule, do your most important works in the flow zone, whichever time of the day it would be. If you marry this two, you're going to really rock. I'll give you a quick 30 second here to think about what was we discussed in the body energy cycle. And does that any really make sense to you? That And I, I'm sure Azhar is going to talk about it as to in nutrition and health, that how your body energy cycle and your moods swing and how you have to control them. And that is where you can really marry up your nutrition with my strategies. Now, one more testimonial from one of our uh, previous webinars. Hello, everyone. My name is Sheetal Bilkar, and I'm founder director of UBAC. So we are in profession of MEP services uh, consultancy, and we serve to construction industry. So recently, I attended a very good webinar on time management strategies by Mr. Nimish Desai. Initially, I thought, uh, what they're going to teach, you know, time management, I'm doing it very well, you know, being women, we are always multitasker and we manage time very well. But uh, actually, this webinar was uh, eye opener. There was a lot of takeaways from uh, this webinar. So uh, some changes I immediately did, like... Uh, um, uh, in my morning uh, routine, um, Nimish sir uh, advised me to uh, take up the creative activity. So I I pursue painting as a hobby. So uh, I shifted my evening um, uh, activity of you know uh, sketching to the morning uh, activity. And I'm telling you, uh, the creativity level increases so much when you take up this just this shift. You know makes a lot of difference and even the other methods also i have you know started implementing like i used to first uh, complete the smaller task earlier and keep the um, bigger task at the end but as per um, this webinar i have now uh, started doing this uh, bigger task uh, before uh, in, uh, there, there was one more strategy which i have started implementing is uh, writing down your to-do list for uh, um the uh, next day uh, one day earlier you know at night or you know somewhere in the evening that has also started giving me very good results so a lot of gratitude for uh, nimish desai sir and yeah thank you so much so guys i'm going to take just 10 minutes more uh, we are going to coming up with the beer project in goa it's a 
three day retreat in Goa from 22nd to 25th of July. Now, what can you expect in this? It, it, it's, it's a very simple one. Beer means business efficiency enhancement retreat. You know, it's a creative initiative to create an ecosystem for all the entrepreneurs to learn, grow, brainstorm. And this is the actual uh, resort photograph. It is right at the edge of the beach where we will have a lot of work happening. And Wi-Fi. Now, this Wi-Fi, I don't mean by our wife, we call Wi-Fi lovingly and all. Wi-Fi here means what's in it for you. So what exactly in it for you? You're going to be learning about visioning life by design, a unique methodology that will give you an insight into your life purpose, break limiting mental blocks, and enable you to design your life dreams. Because we are going to do a lot of activities like firewalk, glass walk and all those things which would break your mental blocks we are going to be doing challenges management it's dedicated to empower and equip you with attitude and skills tools to create recession proof strategies which can withstand challenges and we are going to do productivity booster there to enable you to boost concentration deepen your focus turbocharge your energy and beat procrastination to master your time and finally, a lot of activities and collaborations can happen there. We are going to only take 20 people there because the resort is a very chic, unique boutique resort and we have booked only for our participants. So what can you expect? Take charge of a personal and professional life. Sit back and evaluate what's going right, what is not in your personal and professional life. Get answers to all those questions. Enjoy loads of activities that we are going to do there. Work on your problems with the templates and workbooks that we'll be providing you there. And what's the investment for that? Single occupancy is 75,000. Double occupancy is 60,000. Group of four on twin sharing will be 55,000 plus GS. But hold on. There's a special rate for first 10 action takers. The single occupancy will be only 35,000. Double occupancy will be 30,000 and group of four will have this. Now, this will include three nights and four days stay, all meals, 12 powerful sessions throughout two and a half days and loads and loads of activities. Now, what you can do is you can book your seat today by paying just 5,000 plus GST. Balance you have to pay before 15th of July. Azar, if you can put it in the chat box, the link for me, please. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Thank you very much. Azar, did you put the link, please? Thank you, Azar. So this is the link. This will take you to my web page. It will show you what all we are doing in this, what all is included, what all is not included in this. Anybody has a question, please tell me and I'll be very happy to answer and good to see you, uh, Mr. Vijay Dalwani, if you can unmute and uh, let's have your testimonial. You attended quite a few sessions before. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Nimish Desai. Uh, sorry, I was not able to connect earlier, uh, but yes, definitely I've attended your session. Uh, uh, quite a few times and uh, the best thing I learned is uh, a lot of uh, subtle tips on uh, time management and how do you uh, make a list which is uh, all, we, we business people always make a to-do list but you taught me how to make a not to-do list the certain things which are not important I should be focusing on and I've started to make a no to-do list every day and it saves a lot of time for me Thank, thank you, you for thank you. Thank lovely you, tips. Thank you. Edwin had raised his hand Ed, again. Uh, anyone having questions, please. And if you are uh, booking, please put in the chat box book so we know we are going to have a special surprise package for people who are taking action today. This link is open for first 10 action takers. After that, the prices are going to go back to the normal ones. Anyone having any questions? 
no all right azhar good evening you are on mute azhar we can't hear you no azhar we can't hear you edwin you had question edwin you had raised your hand edwin you want to ask um yes yeah, sir i have a yeah. question uh, you asked us to have a planning before uh, we go, start our work daily planning but Correct. i am a working professional working in a shop floor uh, only on that particular spot i get works so how could i pre plan my work so it will be a, a practical hazard no i mean uh, most of the times normally everybody gets to know their work before i mean i still run a very successful uh, construction company i mean i'm a director at three private limited companies which work in real estate i am a uh, founder of two uh, proprietary firms and even with our labor we sit one day before to tell them what they're going to work on tomorrow otherwise what will labor know how what what are they going to expect it to work tomorrow you can ask your senior sir kal ka kya program hai at least your seniors would know what is to be done tomorrow i mean nobody comes next day and thinks ke chalo aaj kya karna hai correct uh, okay sir ask them sir kal ka kya program hai mereko bata do to wo hisab se main plan karta hu first time second time probably he'll not but ultimately he'll give you in fact he may respect you for asking him one day before sure yes. what am i supposed to do tomorrow sure 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 thank you thank you sir thank you azhar all yours nimish can you am i audible now yes now you are loud and clear all right super 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 and i think before uh, before i start and i think quickly if everyone can just put clap 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 and sure that you all really enjoyed what uh, nimish had to share today because whenever he comes out to speak it's such a such a fun and so much so much of learning so quickly everyone if you can just put clap 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 that's a big round of applause for none other than nimish quickly guys before we jump on to, let me let me just appreciate nimish quickly i think i should start with myself itself first nobody else is i am going to do that clap clap and clap lovely 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 so so i hope you all i hope you all by now it's our assumption that you all are here because you want to grow your business tenants okay and nimish has already shared so much here that we all now have something to start working on that what i want you to do is okay i want you all so okay, before that let me ask you a question that if you all are successful in growing your business just the way you expect will that make you happy or not quickly in the chat box yes or no will it make you happy or will it not make you happy quickly in the chat box i'm sure there is nobody is going to say no come on come on come on is there anybody who says that they will not make them happy if they achieve all the strategies and everything that you wish to grow your business all right harish that's the that's the kind of yes we want like it's like a yes kind of a yes what harish has put okay now nimish shared with us that productivity is so important and a lot of you all mentioned that productivity means doing more in less time that means it ends up with us a lot of time for ourselves right so do you think that will also make you happy that now you have a lot of money and now you have a lot of time as well does does that sound like a nice happy scenario for you all come on quickly everyone who feels that this is a really nice happy state to be come on quickly everyone who agrees come on guys if there is one thing if there is one thing thank you sir yeah if there is one thing i would really expect out of you all is to be participated because it's only then as we as nimish mentioned it's only then that we also have fun because we all have your videos off i would be happy if you want to keep your videos on make it interactive even if you want to unmute and say yes feel free now what i want you to do is that yes really good all right now what you now what i want you to do is close your eyes okay So your voice is uh, sort of disturbing, sir. Uh, Sorry, come again. Some audio problem. Am I audible now? You're audible, but echoing, sir. It seems to be echoing. Uh, is it? It's now? not sharp. It is not sharp, sir. 
Is it better now? One, one. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Now I want. Now I want you all to close your eyes. Okay, and feel yourself in that situation wherein you have really grown your business, whatever that amount is, 10 minutes, 20 x, 50 crores, 100 crores, 200 crores, 2 crores, whatever you wanted to grow your business. Okay, imagine that there is a person who has achieved that. Now the same person imagine has all the time because he has really learned the art of delegating. He's really productive at his work. And he's successful in delegating the work. So now he has all the money that he wanted to. He also has all the time. But all the money and the time that he now has, he's spending most of the money either in medication or in hospital bills, or he's spending most of his time either visiting hospitals or lying down in the bed for months and years, or maybe not as as frequently as he would want to. Now tell me. How do you feel that this situation is? Is it still a happy situation or it is not a happy situation? Come on, quickly in the chat box, everyone. I want you all to understand. Everyone, well, was I clear? Does, does it make sense? Were you able to listen to me? Nikhil says, not happy situation. What about others? Others are feeling happy in this situation? Come on, guys. If there is one thing that I would really want to ask from you all is to participate. Without that, it's not going to be fun. Nikhil says it's not a happy situation. Does it mean that others feel it's a happy situation? Come on, come on, quickly. After that, after that, hold me. All right, Manish, what I'll again say is close your eyes, live in a situation where you have all the money, you have all the time. But the time and money that you have is being spent in hospitalization or medical bills or resting in the house. That's the way that the person is spending the time and the money which has been accumulated. How does this situation feel? Okay, Harry says, not happy situation. That means I was audible enough. Okay, I don't know why come. All right, everyone. Take a piece of paper, take a piece of paper, it's the paper, okay? Crumble it, I'll give you two minutes, three minutes, whatever you want to take. Take a piece of paper and just put it in the chat box if you just have any, any piece of paper. Any, any piece of paper, just crumble it and I'll wait, quickly. There's an activity I want you all to do. Come on everyone. Is it better now? Is my voice better? I don't know. I've already connected to our external. Do you all do you have do you have a paper? Can you all quickly get a paper and just crumble it like a ball? Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Done, sir. Done. Oh. Nikhil, can you can you all get a piece of paper and just crumble it? Yes. Let's, let's, I just want, I just want you all to do a fun activity. That's, this is what I want you to do. Keep your hands like this, okay? Close your eyes, drop the paper, and try to hold it like this, all right? Do it 10 times. Close your eyes and try to catch it. All right, everyone, come on. I'll wait, just try and do it 10 times. And it's just it's just a fun activity just so that we all were sitting on the chair for a lot of time. So let us just get moving, let us just get the blood flowing just so that we feel a little more fresh sitting on the seat. And tell me that it's not a game, it's not a competition. I just want to know that from the 10 attempts, how many times were you able to catch the paper ball? I'll do it. Go ahead, do it. Let me also do 10 times. I'll put my count. Okay, drop one. Hope you all are with me. I got one. I 
got four. Anybody who are participating, how many did you able to catch? I got four. Do you feel, do you feel some, do you feel some rush? Three, should we wait for others? One in time. Four times, two times. <clears throat> there's, there's no, there's no, there's no reward. Okay. Now what I want you to do is close your eyes once again. <clears throat> close your eyes and get your breath back. Just close your eyes. Feel your breath, close your eyes, feel your breath. Now again, imagine a situation similar to the previous one, where you have all the money, you have all the time and you are in the best health possible so that you are enjoying the time with your loved ones, with the money that you have earned all these years when you grew your business. How does it feel? How does it feel to enjoy the time and money that you are committed? Come on, in the chat box. Come on, everyone. Am I open? How does it feel? How does it feel that you have all the money, all the wealth, all the time? Fantastic. Nikhil says, fantastic. <clears throat> Come on, who else? How does it feel? Come on, everyone. Does it feel happier? Do you do you feel that it is important for health to be in? place for us to really make the most of the time and money that cloud nine shala says cloud nine mm. so do you agree as nimish mentioned to grow your business to get productivity you can really bank on your employees or rather you should bank on your employees right can we bank on our employees for our health? Come on, in the chat box. Can our employees make our health healthier? Can they make us healthier? Can they, can they ensure that our health can only get better by doing what they would do? Is, is that even possible? Is that even possible? Would you repeat, sir? Would you repeat, please? So, can you delegate your health to your employees? Can you make them do anything so that you become healthier? Is there any way that you can delegate something to your employees so that you become healthier? Can they do anything which will make you healthier? With their time or skills? No way, right? You can delegate everything in the world, every task, but not your health. Nimish mentioned about income tax audit. Nimish mentioned about time audit. I like to mention about your health audit. When was the last time you did an audit of your health? Come on. I would really be happy if somebody says recently and that there was some outcome and they are trying to take some action on that. Okay. Now, quickly to introduce myself, <clears throat> I'm Azhar. I'm from Mumbai. Across the globe, that's what I do. I help people realize the significance of health, 
that having this whole gamut of happiness as is a very important aspect and irrespective of how much money we earn how much time we have if we do not have our health in place it's of no use and that's exactly what i do and how many of you are interested that right now in this session i teach or rather share so that your health becomes healthier come on in the chat box quickly type me 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 good 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 super 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 what about others what about others what about others <clears throat> I'm going to share, I'm going to share five pillars, okay, five pillars which are of utmost importance when we are supposed to take care of our health, okay. Now, first and foremost, which is, which is the most important thing, what is, what is the one thing which in this whole pandemic, we are trying to keep a track on a very frequent basis. Do you, do you recall it's do you recall it's the oxygen saturation and do and the o2 levels yes immunity sure but do you feel eventually just to check where do we stand where does our health stand the parameter was o2 right that's that's how much of oxygen our body is about to, ready to intake is able to intake so our breathing if you see a lot of people have now started taking breathing classes and breathing sessions so that they can breathe in more oxygen yeah so oxygen is what we survive on we can go without food we can go without anything but we cannot go without oxygen unfortunately oxygen how to breathe is something which we humans were never had to be thought we were all okay we knew how to breathe but in such a busy lifestyle we have forgotten how to breathe so how to breathe right is something which is of utmost importance and that's something which everyone has to really really take uh, important care of and after breathing second is something which i will mention is water a lot of times i see with all the clients that i work with they barely drink sufficient water they do not see that there is they, they literally feel by evening that there is low in productivity they feel that they do not have enough clarity enough focus and all of this is because they are not drinking enough water. So water is of utmost importance, which a lot of people do not pay attention to. So that's the second pillar. And the third, what, what do you feel? What do you, what comes to your mind when I say food? What, what comes to your mind when I say food? Come on, quickly. In the chat box, what comes to your mind when you say food? What is food? Come on, everyone. What is food? What does food mean? What What is the purpose of food? Anybody, anybody in the chat box, please. Healthy food, energy, energy. All right, super. So food is indeed energy. Food is what fuels us, and food is also what builds us. We are eventually built only because of the food that we eat. Correct. Now. Will it draw nutrition? All right, super to say healthy, super. Does it ever happen that you go to the petrol pump and tell the person that job ke marzi petrol to petrol, diesel to diesel, whatever you like? Do you do that? Does anybody do that? That today today I feel like filling petrol, so I will fill petrol, or someday I will feel diesel, or someday just yes, never, right? Just imagine that we know that food and nutrition is what drives us, what builds us, what gives us energy. Don't you think that we are supposed to pay attention to that? Can you just can you just have whatever we have been served, or it has to be planned? Nimish spoke about planning. Don't you think that what we eat should be planned? Do you agree? 
yeah it should be planned now let me tell you that whenever you are planning there are three there are three there are three very important areas which i would want you all to focus on so that gives you more energy throughout the day so that you can do more okay first and foremost i would suggest that thank you thank you shala first and foremost i would really really urge you all to make sure that you all eat sufficient proteins now what happens is that when we speak of proteins people think that protein is all only to build muscles and stuff no protein is involved in almost every function in our physiology directly or indirectly right from our brain function to our metabolism to every enzymatic uh, function to our nails to our hair to our skin to our organs protein is required in almost every function but barely people are able to consume enough protein so i would very strongly insist that keep a track of your protein intake in every meal <clears throat> that's one second when it comes to nutrition a lot of people in this time are suffering with covid and there is so much of antibiotics and medications being served what happens it it really really destroys your gut microbiome and in order to make sure that our gut microbiome stays healthy it's very important to eat a vast variety of fruits and vegetables which will make sure that the gut microbiome stays healthy and unfortunately people do not do that you know eating pav bhaji does not is not considered as eating vegetables let me tell you because most of the nutrients is dead when the pav bhaji is ready so make sure that there is enough and sufficient vegetables that you eat on a daily basis and third is something which again very very often neglected or feared is eating anything which has fat now there is something called as good and bad fats okay so the good and the quality fat is what comes from nuts and seeds and stuff which i would very strongly insist you all to pay attention to and make sure that it is part of your everyday diet okay i hope you all are taking notes because these were the three important areas of nutrition which i would want you all to pay attention to would you would you repeat sir please i will repeat first okay let me see if there is somebody else who would like to put it in the chat box if not i will repeat come on anybody who is taking notes who would like to repeat if nobody then i'll put it try give it an attempt guys come on it will it will help you recall can anybody repeat what were the three areas which i mentioned about nutrition come on come on come on everyone okay i'll repeat first was proteins make sure that there is sufficient protein in every meal eat sufficient proteins nickel super all right first is proteins water correct second was dietary fiber so for that you have to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis and third i mentioned is dietary fats which i would recommend you to consider nuts seeds avocados to keep getting quality fats now now that's nutrition okay the next pillar and the next very very crucial pillar which is most most often neglected especially in this pandemic now nimish mentioned that a lot of people are struggling to have enough time i would say that people literally are compromising their sleep just to watch movies and series on netflix and amazon prime and what not and as he rightly mentioned there is this new clubhouse there's so much of scrolling all night that people just end up wasting their time and compromising on what on sleep so what happens is when you are trying to stay productive during the day but if the night prior you have been slept well the next day you will not be able to focus on your work and you will not be able to be as productive as you wish to irrespective of how much ever you follow a plan structure for being productive but here from within if you do not have that you will never be able to product be productive and you will never be even able to achieve all that growth or all that performance that you want in your business or your work so sleep is something which is so highly compromised 
Now, when we speak of sleep, people often just look at the number of hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours. It's not just about the quantity of sleep, it's about the quality of sleep. There are different stages and what we eat also determines that how good our sleep would be. Okay, that's something again, which is most often neglected. And last, and of course, not the least, one, one last pillar which I would want to mention is movement. Okay, we are living in a time where there is so much of luxury that we do not have any movement, especially in this lockdown, we are literally on our couches whole day, whole night, and there's barely any movement. And let me tell you, tell you that we humans were meant to move. All the couches, all the sofas, all the vehicles, all the aircraft trains, it is only taking us away from our healthier state. That's not, that's one of the reasons why our ancestors never had a problem of focusing on health because they just by default naturally moved so much. So there are five zones in the world, which is called the blue zone. And now that's five zones. There are people who have, that, which have the highest population of people living for hundred years. And when everything was observed in their lifestyle, they all, they all really were naturally moving a lot in their daily lifestyle, daily routine. So movement is something which is so crucial. You must have realized we just did one small activity and we just saw that how the blood started to flow and circulate within our body. But that's again something which is so, so, so crucial. Now I had mentioned about five strategies. I will give you the sixth bonus strategy and that's sunlight. Light has such a significant influence of our health, which is again, not being taught or educated to people. We humans are supposed to take and soak natural sunlight. It's, it's so very important for our entire physiologically functioning because our entire body functions on a circadian rhythm. You know, right in our brain, we have something called a suprachiasmatic nucleus, which drives our daily functioning, which is based purely on light. When light hits our eyes and hits the suprachiasmatic nucleus, it where so many function starts and ends. So it is the sunlight, which is so important. So how many of you are now at a point where they feel that health is as important as everything else. Come on, in the chat box. In the chat box, come on. <clears throat> you, all, you all agree that health is important? Do you all agree that it cannot be delegated? Do you all agree that without health, the money and the growth is of no use? Do you all agree? Do you all agree that it cannot be delegated? So when, when should we, I have a question. When should we, when should we start focusing on our health? When, when, when is the, when should we, when should we focusing on our health? When should we start? If you look at me closely, right now, you see, that's what Project Now is all about. The whole idea is to help people not to procrastinate. What happens is when you speak of health, I do from Monday, I do from tomorrow, I do after the vacation, I do after this, I do after that, but this, that right now, the Monday never comes, the tomorrow never comes. And what happens eventually that the health takes a backseat. Do you agree? How many of you can resonate with me that it's it's our health which will always take a backseat and it just stays there. And then comes the time when in all of a sudden we have no option but to utilize our time and money only for health. But that's a forced decision. But if you start taking the action now, it will be a decision of your choice and not by force. Do you all agree? How many of you, how many of you would be interested if if I say that? Everything that I shared with you, the chances are that you might be knowing all of this. The chances are very much that you might already be knowing all of this. Maybe, maybe not to this extent, but maybe to some extent. But the problem is knowing and doing are two different things. People know, but they don't do. And for everyone who would want me to do it with them, to make them all of this, do it together along with me, 
from the coming Monday, I'm doing a seven day Kickstarter program. When I do programs like this in person, I charge three lakhs for three months when I try to help people with this entire lifestyle protocol. And if it is just nutrition, I charge 60,000 for a year, okay? Now, when it comes to a group for the seven day Kickstarter, I'm doing it only for 1,399. We start from the coming Monday and seven days we do it together. I will tell you what to eat, how much to eat, when to sleep, how to sleep, how to move. Everything that I mentioned is something which I am going to guide you and make you all do it together. All right. So if Nimesh, you can just put in the chat box the link so that I can just, whoever is interested, my batch starts from Monday, the coming Monday. And seven days, as I said, it is right now. So it's, it's right now that I would want to really add one more thing. Whoever after seven days feels that they did not enjoy, they did not see value, I'm going to give you 100% money back. So there's nothing that you can lose. And that's, that's more or less which I had to cover. It's what are the timings, sir? It's a seven day, the whole seven days, there's, it's not a timing. It's going to be a private WhatsApp group and every activity will be on the group. So there is no timing. Okay. It, will be, it will be a group activity on what there is no particular time. There is, there is no time. It's just that there is no time to eat food, right? Correct. You will be doing as per your daily schedule. Nothing will change. Nothing will change. Yep. There's the link. There's the link Nimish has already shared. And if you have any questions, feel, feel free to ask. I know what the time, I think it's already uh, 10 minutes to nine. And I think we have committed, we had asked your time till nine o'clock. So it's 10 more minutes that you have if you have any doubts, any questions with respect to whatever I shared about nutrition, all the pillars, any doubts, any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to help. The least, the least that I expect out of the time that you have spent with me is to take your health seriously and remember that your health cannot be delegated and remember that whatever needs to be done needs to be done by yourself and last but not the least, the time is clicking, the clock is clicking, you have to take the action now. Do not let your health be on the back seat. And that's that's it from my side. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to take. I think there's somebody who has just entered the waiting room where we are just about to end. Nimish, any any closure would you like to 